I am Nia Westbay. I'm a senior policy analyst on the youth policy team at the Center for Law and Social Policy, or CLASP. Um, I want to start off with a few thank yous as we get started. Um, first, I want to want to thank Representative Ayanna Presley and her staff for partnering with us to set up this event. I want to thank our partners, the Center for Native American Youth, the Aspen Forum for Community Solutions, and Frontline Solutions, all of, who, all of whom helped to spread the word to their partners and have contributed to this event today. I want to thank our fabulous panelists. I just had the privilege of having lunch with them, and let me tell you, this is about to be an exciting conversation that we're going to have. I want to thank all of my class colleagues in the room and not in the room who have helped to make this event possible. Um, and finally, for those of you who had a chance to take a look at our quote wall on the way in, I want to thank all of our focus group participants who, um, whose words and insights and sharing are the basis of this whole um, body of work and event. I have a couple of logistical things that I want to put out there for you all. Um, first of all, we want to encourage everyone to share reflections, reactions on social media using the hashtags that are on your agenda and the Twitter handles that are in your agenda. The only exception is the one that's in there for Brenda that's actually not her Twitter handle. So some random Brenda will be getting a lot of messages if you all use that one. Um, Secondly, if you didn't get a chance when you were coming in to take a look at the quote wall, we encourage you at the end of the event to do that. There's, um, it's posted out in the hallway, and there's sticky notes and pens where you can stick your own reactions um, to the quotes or to what you've heard today. And finally, because we're not going to have really time for questions for our panelists, they are going to stay for a little bit after the event. So if you want to come up and talk to any of them or any of us, um, then we welcome that and encourage you all to continue to engage in dialogue with us. So my main task as we get started is to share with you all the story of this work and sort of how we came to be in this room today. Um, the Center for Law and Social Policy, or CLASP, is a 50-year-old anti-poverty advocacy organization here in D.C. Um, and the youth team is unique at CLASP in that we're the only team that's focused on a population as opposed to a particular policy area. So our work touches on a lot of things, but both CLASP and the, in general and the youth team in particular have really been working over the last few years to bring a racial equity lens to our work and increasingly an intersectional race and gender equity lens to our work. Our work. Um, so that's part of what led us into doing the set of focus groups that I mentioned. Um, we spoke with young women all around the country, um, Latina young women in Central Valley, California, Native young women in Denver, Colorado, Hmong American young women in St. Paul, Minnesota, African American young women in Birmingham, Alabama, and gender nonconforming young people here in Washington, D.C. Um, to hear from them about what were their challenges, what are their barriers, what's working, and really what advice do they have for people in power with resources in terms of addressing these challenges and barriers. Um, and we learned a lot from those conversations, uh, a lot of which is captured in the analogy of a tree that we talk a lot about in the youth team. Um, so if you look at the leaves of a tree, you think of that as the outcomes. That's what everybody can see, it's really obvious, right? And the outcomes for young women of color are different than for some other young people. But what we really are trying to do in this body of work is think not just about the leaves at the top of the tree, but the ground that the tree is growing in, or the soil, which are the systems of power, the isms based in race and gender and their intersection um, that shape all of our lives and that everything in this country is built on, as well as the roots of the tree, which are really the structural barriers or root causes that we learned about from young women. And there were seven of them that came up across the different groups, financial strain, educational equity, mental health, low wage work, housing, injustice, and exposure to violence. And a lot of times when you hear conversations about women's issues, these are not the issues that are being talked about, right? But we wanna say to you all today, these are women's issues, these are women of color issues, and that if we wanna achieve equity in, these, in this country, we really have to start to look at those root causes. So we have three overall goals of our work focused on young women of color. One is to bring increased visibility to the structural barriers and the systems of power that young women of color experience in this country and how um, they impact their experiences. We wanna see increased resources, both public and private, committed to young women of color and their communities. 
And we want to see policy change at the local, state, and federal level to start to disrupt these systems of power and promote economic justice. So we really look at this briefing as a kickoff to our next phase of this work, where we want to be working in partnership with young women of color to build a tailored advocacy agenda and build champions on the Hill for this work and for real and lasting change. So I'm going to close with a quote that is one of my favorite quotes from the whole project, which actually came from St. Paul, Minnesota, where um, one of our participants said, they don't care about like intersectionality feminism. They don't care about that stuff. You're, you're like, you know, Black Lives Matter. We need to be woke. We need, we need to worry about this stuff. Why should I do that? How does that affect me? For too long in this country, our policies have said to young women of color that we don't care about this stuff, and how does that affect me? Policy making that does its very best to achieve social and economic justice for young women of color is in the best interest of the nation. I was really moved by a quote on Representative Presley's website um, where she says that the people closest to the pain should be closest to the power. And part of why that resonated with me is because it's also very closely aligned to something that we say at class in the youth team all the time, which is the people closest to the problem are often closest to the solution. So I invite all of you to join us today and moving forward in uprooting these structural barriers by turning over the ground to reveal the root causes, partnering with young women of color to identify solutions, and seeding change in equitable ground.